The piece I chose for this art analysis is Maud Adams of Joan of, as Joan of Arc by Alfonso Nietzsche. I'm going to be doing my analysis in six parts. First, I'm going to present the official Met description and details. Uh, second, I'm going to talk a little bit about who, when, where, why this piece was created. Uh, then I'm going to do my visual analysis in four separate parts. So first I will do scale and composition, then I'm going to do form and light, third I'm going to do color and tone, and then fourth I'm going to do the texture and pattern. So this is the official Met description. I won't read through the entire thing because all of the important details are mentioned again later. It just gives a little bit about the background, a little bit more about Mucha, and a little bit about Joan of Arc. Uh, it talks also a little bit about the figure behind Maud Adams as Joan of Arc. You can see Joan of, like, the medieval heroine Joan of Arc behind her. Uh, and it's supposed to be her expressing her kind of excitement to play this role. So this piece was painted by Alfonso Mucha, he's a Czech artist. He painted it in 1909. He painted this portrait as, of Maud Adams' Joan of Arc to promote a one-night gala performance of the Frederick Schiller's Maid of Orleans at Harvard University Stadium on June 22, 1909. He also designed the production's costumes and supervised the direction of it. So the scale, composition, and pictorial pacer space are listed here. I'm going to skim through them quickly. Um, the scale, it's actually a rather large piece. It's 6.25 feet tall and 2.5 and feet wide. Uh, the painting mostly consists of two obvious parts. You have, of course, Maud Adams set slightly right of the center, and the intricate frame that guides your eye back to Adams. Um, I didn't want to include this as part of the composition because it isn't as in-your-face as the other two, but I would also consider the apparition behind her as, like, a secondary part of this composition. Uh, in the pictorial space, Mucha uses the trees that he has placed in the foreground and the background to give the sense that the viewer is in the same wooded area looking through at Maud Adams as Joan of Arc. So the form and light are fairly simple. He paints in a way that creates a sense of urgency. It's she's exclaiming. She's a. It doesn't ne always read to me. I sometimes see it both ways. It doesn't always read to me as excitement. Sometimes it reads to me as almost a fear. That she's in fear, but the rest of the painting doesn't lead me to believe this. So the lighting is very light which also lends to the f idea that she's not afraid. It's not very dark. It's very light, it's very innocent, it, and this lightness gives the impression that it's full daylight. The most co prominent color choices in this piece are pink and light yellow. Pink represents femininity, romance, and sensitivity and tenderness, often in paintings, while well, that light shade of yellow often represents freshness and joy and innocence. Much like the color choices, the tones kind of led to this expression of tenderness and femininity, and they contrast so beautifully with the dark to tones of the border. The texture isn't very obvious in this. Everything has a kind of softness to it, even like the way the trees are textured almost looks like watercolor. The way the border is textured is more of a contrast to the actual painting because it's very detailed, very intricate, whereas everything else is kind of textured in a very soft way. The most notable patterns are, of course, the lilies and the border and the two symmetrical rings of thro thorns with the fleur-de-lis in the center of each of them. Other than that, I didn't notice any other patterns, but I think it lended very well to the way the painting was created. 